we are uh, on air now. So thank you. Thank you for joining us, thank Dr. Cow. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Jones. And I want to welcome all of you and thank uh, the committee members for your service to uh, this very important issue and for your service to the department and the country. We uh, really rely on committed uh, members like yourself to share of your time and your expertise and your your passion, if I can say, to, to help uh, the country be healthier. So it's uh, a great pleasure to see all of you. I just had the honor of swearing in uh, five new members in my office just moments ago, so it, it's great to be here. Uh, I am a um, physician who has trained in multiple areas. Uh, I'm actually board certified in, in four areas and started my career in, in Boston focused on treatment issues as most uh, physicians do. Uh, but over my career, I've had the great honor of seeing health from a very, very broad perspective as well. So uh, right now I can tell you that I am, uh, first of all, a clinician that's clinician that's cared for patients for over 30 years before coming to this post. Uh, I am a researcher, was at uh, Boston University and Harvard School of Public Health and have published uh, my share in the medical literature and won my share of grants from agencies. Also written many grants that didn't get funded like uh, many researchers if I can say. Um, also as a former state health commissioner in Massachusetts from 1997 to 2003. So that was my first exposure to public service and, and looking at health from an extremely broad perspective. Uh, and now as your Assistant Secretary for Health, I have the great honor of overseeing uh, this committee with Dr. Jones uh, and an, a number of other committees, offices, and also serve as a, a senior advisor to the Secretary. So I'm always very humbled to meet members of our advisory committees because you give of your time and uh, you are at the cutting edge and you, look, you know so much about the issues at hand that you can teach us a lot and advise us in many, many areas. So that's why I was very eager and, and happy to, to be here today. Uh, I also want to thank Dr. Jones because from the moment I got here, she has been advising me and updating me on the efforts of your committee, telling me how important the work uh, has been that you have undertaken, advising me about the scientific uh, developments. And I know there's a very important uh, conference that NIH is supporting next year on the state of the knowledge of chronic fatigue syndrome. So that's 2011, I believe. And then for 2010, a new conference is being set up as we speak to look at the possible contributions and the state of the knowledge on XMRV. So uh, we are very excited about these two developments and we want to work closely with you to make these conferences uh, critically important and relevant to, to the people we serve. Uh, also, I also I noted that on the agenda today we have Dr. Jerry Holmberg speaking. Uh, he is our major senior advisor on blood safety, uh, and he oversees uh, one of the efforts that's integral to our office of the Assistant Secretary for Health. So he is an, another partner for us, and I know that uh, you've already seen uh, Dr. Holm Holmberg's knowledge and experience at work. Why don't I just stop here and maybe quickly ask all of you to introduce yourselves very, very quickly. I'm, I just met all of you downstairs in my office, but if we can just go around and you can just uh, tell me who you are and very briefly your background and your connection with chronic fatigue syndrome. Should we start with you, sir, down here? Sure. Leonard Jason. Um, I'm professor of psychology at DePaul University, director of the Center for Community Research. Um, I've been involved in epidemiology and um, different types of diagnostic issues in terms of the case definition. Um, over the last uh, 15 years. I'm uh, Galen Marshall, the University of Mississippi uh, Medical Center. Uh, I have cared for and done research in uh, patients with immune-based diseases for about 25 years. Uh, I got involved in chronic fatigue uh, uh, research as well as clinical care uh, back when they renamed it because uh, to calling it CFITS because they didn't know what to do. So immunologists got a handle on it. And uh, from that, I got involved in stress-related research. And uh, my interest and uh, expertise is related to the fact that uh, uh, what, uh, the, the, this condition is not a single disease entity, but has multiple etiologies. Therefore, it's going to need multiple approaches to care in an organized fashion. And I'm just pleased to have an opportunity to participate in that thought process. I'm Nancy Klimas from the University of Miami and the Miami VA. I um, do a lot of work in chronic fatigue and Gulf War illness. I've been in this field for 
a long time, more than 20 years. <laughs> and uh, and I care for patients and, and, and do clinical and basic science research. Um, my name is Michael Halton. Um, my lab discovered the hepatitis C virus in the late 80s, after which we developed blood tests, um, identified drug targets, and developed vaccine strategies uh, for clinical testing. Um, I've had an interest in uh, chronic fatigue for the last few years, and uh, will be joining the University of Alberta in Canada later this summer, where um, I intend to initiate research in, in this area. Hi, I'm Susan Levine, and I'm a clinician in New York City, and have cared for people with chronic fatigue syndrome for the last 20 years or so. Hi, I'm Mark Avaya Cole. I'm the FDA ex officio member of this committee. I'm in the Division of Special Pathogens and Transplantation Products at the Center for Drug Evaluation and Research, and I've been working with this committee since its creation. Thank you. I'm Eleanor Hanna, <clears throat> excuse me, from NIH in the Office of Research and Women's Health, and I've been working with this committee since 2001. <clears throat> Uh, Christopher Snell, I'm a professor and department chair at University of the Pacific in Stockton, California. Uh, we have a research group that's uh, interested in energy metabolism and fatigue. Uh, we've been involved in chronic fatigue syndrome research for probably the last 12 years, and I've been a member of CIFSEC for the last three years. I'm <clears throat> Mike Miller from the Center for Disease Control. Um, I'm the Associate Director for Laboratory Science for a newly named National Center, the National Center for Emerging and Zoonotic Infectious Diseases. Um, I've been at CDC for 37 years, and I'm a clinical microbiologist, and have been on the committee here for about two years now. Good morning. I'm Deborah Willis-Fillinger. I'm a practicing internist um, for the last 27 years or so. And I've been at HRSA for about 20 of those years, where I am currently working in, in, as the acting director of the Office of Health Equity. Um, I've been on the panel for about three years now. Thank you. I'm Chris Williams, and I am the director for strategic partnerships at the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality. Uh, prior to that assignment, I was the director of the Office of Communications and Knowledge Transfer and have a lot of experience um, trying to translate research into practice for clinicians, health systems, and other audiences. Uh, prior to my executive branch uh, career, I spent 13 years um, as the health policy advisor to the Senate Majority Leader, George Mitchell. And uh, I also am a chronic fatigue syndrome patient. I'm Mike O'Connor. I'm with the Social Security Administration of uh, the Office of Disability Programs. Um, our office is responsible for the medical and disability policies um, surrounding chronic fatigue syndrome. I'm Kevin Farmer. I'm also from the Social Security Administration uh, in the same department, Office of Disability Programs, and in, attending on behalf of Cheryl Williams. Good morning. 